So I'm writing a book uh, called The Age of Context where I'm getting around and seeing uh, both startups and companies who are building predictive systems, systems that study sensors, wearable computing, big data, social networks, and uh, location information to do things for us and serve us. And we have an interesting company called Recall that does exactly that. They're going to help you live your life on your mobile phone. Yes. Who are you? Well, my name is Sunil Vimori. I am the Chief Product Officer of Recall. And uh, just one more thing about me is uh, before I was with Recall, I actually recorded my life in extreme detail for two years as part of a research project at MIT. And so uh, what we're interested in is if you had a detailed recording of your life, could it help you with day-to-day -day memory problems? And did it? <laughs> uh, some, yes, and some, no. Uh, one of the things that we learned from that is it's a really bad idea to record your entire life in that amount of excruciating detail. I mean, I had a device with me. I was recording audio, all the conversations, uh, recording the weather, uh, which, you know, where I was at, uh, all of this stuff. And it's useful for a certain set of things, but pretty not useful for a whole bunch of other things. But what we learned from that, we turned into products, uh, the first product we did with Recall. Wow. And so, uh, but uh, it, it was a really fun experiment to do, especially in a place like the MIT Media Lab, which uh, you know, hopefully you've you know, you, you heard about, yep. where we do really, really crazy things over there. And uh, just to be able to record my life in that much detail was uh, uh, invigorating and embarrassing all at once. So. Well, we're, we're all going to live in this world in a year or two when we get these uh, Google glasses and Oakley's making glasses uh -huh. and ski goggles that ha are going to have recording devices on them, right? So we're, we're going to get to discover. Well, are they going to have recording like, devices on them? Or are they going to? Uh, okay. The Google one has yeah. a front facing camera and it has a microphone. Yeah. So it could capture uh, pictures or video. Yeah. You know, they've already shown that off. Yeah. And I've so, heard of a couple other companies also, they have like, you know, around your neck and to be able to record stuff like that. But yep. the real challenge is what do you do with all that data? Yep. And so with the experiment, we were envisioning uh, at the time, this experiment was done about, you know, eight to 10 years ago. Um, we were envisioning we were going to have a world like this, and we wanted to find out, you know, is this of any value to, uh, to anybody to have this? And we did find some areas where it was going to be really useful. And the areas where it's really useful is if, you know, if you have a deadline and you're really struggling to remember something really, really important, then this thing becomes totally valuable. But at all other times, it becomes a lot less valuable. In fact, it sometimes becomes incriminating uh, for some things. Uh, you know, people are, you know, get very concerned that they were recorded by audio, in particular audio. People are much more worried about audio than video. Um, when Interesting. They're, yes. They're a lot less worried about if you take a picture of them or take a video. But if you want to capture their voice, people get much more sensitive. It's one of the things that we learned yeah. about this. So. Well, we're going to have new, new social rules if you're going to wear these Google uh, wearable computers. You know, hey, uh, we don't allow that at, at, at this party. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. The, one of the first things I did before I did the experiment was I wear, wore a microphone, but didn't attach it to anything. So then I started walking around the, the, the lab and walking around campus and seeing what reactions I got from people. And it's very interesting. One set of people sort of run away. Another set of people walk right up to me, and they have a few things they'd like to say to get on record. So uh, there's a couple of behaviors I already know about there. But it'd be interesting to see when this thing is done much more widely, so how people are going to change. So what is recall? What, what, what did you do with this learning, and, and what do you do now? Yeah. So um, the first product we did was focused on memory assistance. We really wanted to help people uh, with day-to-day -day memory problems. And instead of recording all the time, we let people just essentially pick up their phone, say something, and then we would figure out the right time to remind them about it. Okay. Um, so we had time-based So it's not like Evernote where I, I can take a picture of somebody's badge mm -hmm. and remember their name or something like that, but. Yeah, the, we had that part where you can do the, you know, to, you know, do the capture. However, the company's name is Recall. Our focus was not on being able to capture really well. Yeah. And you know, Evernote does a fantastic job of capturing. There's a lot of uh, other companies do a fantastic job of capturing, but when do I remind you about that note? Yep. And so we had uh, location-based reminding, we had time-based reminding, but the, the other thing we had was forgetting-based reminding. So we have a model of how people forget, when people forget, and we also looked into people's calendars to say, aha, I have a meeting with Robert Scoble. 
And I want to remember things relevant to Robert Scoble in advance of the meeting. Why? Because if I'm talking to you, I don't want to be looking at my phone, figure, you know, trying to remember all the cool things. I want to remember that in advance. Yep. And so we know when is the right time to en you know, enrich your memory in advance of meeting you so that when I'm talking to you, I have all those cool facts and information handy and not being a technology slave, but actually be a, you know, a better person in the, in the meeting, be more, uh, uh, more, more alert more uh, to what you're saying and be uh, attuned to the things that are important to you. But that's how we dovetailed also into our second product and the main thing we're really here to talk about with, uh, with context and being proactive, which is Recall Rover. So in addition to helping people remember, we, you know, what we noticed is our users wanted us to help people just to be proactive for the entire uh, thing. Uh, so don't just remind me of, about things that I put into the system, but help me with everything related to, say, meeting you. Yeah. So for example, in advance of this meeting, um, my device told me that, okay, I need to start Imagine driving now to get to, uh, to get to here on time. Uh, it told me things along the way, which is, you know, since uh, it's about you know, 1.30 sure right now, uh, it told me places to get some food along the way, which matched my tastes uh, and, uh, and the kind of food that I liked. Yep. Um, it, uh, you know, once I did arrived- Did it tell you like uh, about the Chinese restaurant on the corner or? Uh, let's see, what did it tell me about? I'll tell you what it told me about. So it told me about, uh, uh, Fang on 660 Howard Street. Okay. So is that the Chinese place? Uh, it's another one. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, so this is what it said. Well, that's probably based on my taste. So it's looking at uh, the variety of restaurants around you know, in the area. It said, hey, this is, uh, this is one that probably matches my taste. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about this one in particular, but, uh, but also sometimes in a place like San Francisco, there's about half a dozen places in the area. So it, it'll just pick one that, uh, uh, that, it thinks is, uh, that it thinks is interesting. Um, it also had a, uh, prepared a biography about you in preparation for this meeting, so I knew some things about you uh, in advance. And uh, also, um, it, uh, while I was driving, it suppressed any extraneous information. So it knows when I'm driving and it doesn't distract me uh, with all the additional uh, information. So for example, it will also keep me up to date with important Facebook posts, et cetera, but it won't do that while I'm driving. Yeah. Uh, now, th that's interesting because I have, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, all hooked into the notification system on my phone, mm -hmm. and it's constantly notifying me. Oh, yeah. If you send me an email right now, it'll sh in fact, there's an email, right? Yep. Just shows up, right? And that, that's bothersome. Do you go into the notification system and turn that off, or is there... Or is it just in your app that you have control? Yes, we go into the notification system. Where, you know, we can't stop everything that the you know that the OS uh, that you know the Android uh, uh, does for notification. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is show how uh, how our technology, hypothetically, suppose we were running the notification system um, during meetings, we put the silence on. It While you're driving, we are taking that information. Start. You know, flood you and really bringing it down to a trickle of what's important. So, for example, in a meeting, right now, you know, you and I are in a meeting. If you were to email me, that notification will go through. If the person who I'm meeting after this emails me, that will go through, but no one else can get through right now. Got it. Okay. And unless. Not even you, your wife? Um, well, but, I'm going to be meeting with her later on, but no, not even my wife, not okay. right now. Because after the meeting, the system will tell me. Aha, the meeting is over. Here are some things that, uh, that I suppressed. Here are some things that you should pay attention to uh, that I didn't show you because you were in a meeting. So I'll still oh, get her insane. message, but this is not the time for that message. So you can even extend this to other things because um, uh, say, for example, that there was, uh, you know, one of the other things our, our, our technology does is it'll uh, identify uh, various opportunities, sales, deals, uh, et cetera, while I'm in Here's the area. So while I'm in San Francisco, there may be a couple things I might want to take advantage of, a store that I want to go to. It won't do that during the meeting. However, before or after, it'll say, here's an opportunity for you to go to a particular place. That Is that informed by your to-do list? Because if you put, uh, I need to buy some uh, jeans mm -hmm. on your to-do list, maybe it will bring that up when you're near Levi's or near the Gap for yeah. instance, and you have an extra hour of time. Yeah, so it's, it's looking at not only my to-do list, it's looking at my email. Okay. Uh, those are some of the primary things. It's looking at my calendar and social network also for other purposes. So you know, one of the reasons why we use email is um, we, want, we have a technology that will take a whole bunch of email 
and distill it down into just the things where you need to take action on. So you know, we've all had people who you know, who've sent us these long emails with one action item at the bottom, or if you get you know, hundreds of emails a day, yep. you know, which are the ones I really need to pay attention to now, and which are the ones I can wait till the end of the day? Well, our technology will go sentence by sentence and look at the person sending it and figure out, hmm, it looks like this person's asking you to do something or needs some attention or there's some action you need to take as a result of this and we'll only show that part of the message you and have it'll suppress everything email. else. Email you just now, received from that's, you know, that's Trinet actually one of the favorite features the our users uh, who, uh, who had a chance to use this thing have, uh, have, have really enjoyed is you know, it cuts down the email flood down to a much more manageable amount because we're just focusing you on the imp uh, on the important part. I think this is going to be a big trend in 2013. I, I already have, ha have seen this with uh, email cleaners like uh, uh, other inbox and SaneBox mm -hmm. and uh, Google's own smart labels mm -hmm. uh, that separate email into boxes. Yep. Uh, you know, crappy emails, commercial email, social e social notifications. They put them in mm -hmm. separate boxes, and that way. Um, you know, the email Rocky sends me goes to my inbox. Yeah, right. so so a lot of people use filters, and if I if I read your blog right, you have about 1,500 filters, yeah. is that right? Did I, did Those I, are handwritten ones yeah. on top of these three products, yeah. that, that auto filter. Yeah, right. see, I, I'd love to uh, eliminate that task from your life in terms of, you know, setting up and maintaining all of that, because, um, you know, I, I do think the technology can figure out these important, as you say, you know, Google Smart Labels. We actually use Google Smart Labels to help inform how we do our categorization here. Got because it. if you have an incoming email, and that's one of the philosophies we have. If somebody else has invented something that can help with personal assistance, we totally will use that to improve the experience for the user. Got it. So Google Smart Labels tells us, all right, for this message, what did Google say about it? and what do we know about the sender, et cetera, so we can figure out, do we really want to show this to you? Uh, but it's not just on an individual message. We also have a technology that tries to figure out what you're doing right now. Um, right now, we are in a, you know, in, in a, a meeting. meeting, in a meeting or an interview. And that was on both of our calendars. So does it, by the way, does it connect our calendars and say, because if we're both on the system, does it get smarter by us both being on the system? Uh, well, we, we haven't crossed that privacy barrier yet because okay. for me to, to get information about your calendar, you know, we, we don't want to take that step yet until we, we, uh, right, we ask if, the users. But if I'm on the system and I've given it access to calendar and you've given it access to calendar, it could behind the scenes say, hey, there's the same yep, name exactly. on the same date and we know, I, I don't know that you could figure that out, but we can. certainly if yeah. you put the same address and... You know, you can start figuring out, oh, these two people are going to be in the same room at the, or the same area at the same time. Yeah, we actually don't need to share the calendar to do that because if we independently have that from each of you, we can actually put two and two together that way and figure out, aha, you know. Uh, it, so what you're asking, we do, but we don't necessarily do it because we have the access to the calendar. We have another way where we, uh, where we get that information to know you and I are going to be at the same place at the same time. Let's assume you're both you and I are in the system. It knows you and I are going to be are uh, are slated to be at the same place at the same time. Yeah. So that's how for me it starts preparing me for the oh. meeting, and then for you, you know, um, it uh, it could start preparing you for the meeting by telling you information about me. Now you can start seeing how these things can really be powerful five years from now, when they get that kind of granular detail and there's millions of people on them. I mean, imagine we're all going to South by Southwest. What kinds of new experiences it's going to show us based on who we are and what, mm -hmm. what, you know, what panel discussion we're going to. I mean, it, it's really going to get really rich, isn't I, it? I don't think it's going to take five years. Uh, I, think, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of stuff in 2013. I mean, we already talked about a variety of people who are, uh, who are in this area. Uh, we're definitely playing in this area, and we're working with other companies who are trying to get this thing out to, uh, to customers as fast as possible. Uh, I think we're really talking about uh, you know elevating what it means to be smart in a smartphone and to be an assistant in a smartphone and have these things really manage our attention better. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I feel like playing a game, okay, fine, I want to play a game, but you know what? There are times when this thing really should be quiet and stay out of the way. And in 2013, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that. But yes, 2014, 15, I don't think it's going to take much more than you know a year to two years before we're really going to start seeing. Even as you're saying, you go to South by Southwest and you go to, you know, 
Here you are, and there's a whole bunch of people who you know. One, you'd love to become aware of them. Second, what's the latest that's happening about them? Three, would you even like to meet them? Yeah. Um, and the other part of this is what's, you know, what's trending, what's happening around here? And in a particular in a place like that, the information is going all over the place. Everybody is vying for your attention right there. They want, you know, Robert, please come to us, uh, especially in a position like yours where yeah. you, know, you have such a, a powerful voice. I'm sure you get you know, 100 times the kind of uh, uh, information flow of people wanting your attention. Well, who's going to be standing as the guardian between them and you so that you can better pick out what are the things that are really important here? So even figuring out there are you know, at a place like CES or South by Southwest, there are 20 things trending at a particular time, not yep. just one. Which is the one that's relevant to you? And how will we know that? Well, we profile you. Um, so, you know, we do have technology that will go and profile a person and try to figure out, okay, what are the topics that are of importance to you? And, you know, from what I understand about how you manage uh, your social network, you curate a lot. Yep. You, you're, you're very good about this. No. I like I click like on a lot of things mm -hmm. to tell the system who I am, mm -hmm. what I want to see, and then I signal it by by telling people what, by doing interviews, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's a way to tell you what I want to do tomorrow, right? Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, hey, I'm writing a book. I want to meet people, okay. you know, who are doing cool technology. So yeah. those are signalers that bring that to me. Yeah. Right? So there's another part of the spectrum, which is the person who doesn't do anything. Yeah, my dad. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and we want to make it approachable to them also. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, an automatic, you know, uh, the manual focus camera to the autofocus camera. Look what happens when you bring that technology to the, uh, to the end user. So that's actually one of our goals also is we, you know, we want to make that approachable to people who would not otherwise go in and uh, have the time or inclination like, you know, and I, you know, I put a lot of filters on too, yeah. but can still benefit from the, from these technologies. So, uh, you know, Vic Gendotre, Google talks just like you are, and he, mm -hmm. he bought the team that builds the Google Now, you know, code name for that was Wingman. So mm -hmm. Google's gonna be a competitor in this space. What, what makes you different than, you know, a team at Google that's gonna do this stuff with wearable computing? And all? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, hope, uh, I hope we're not competitors, but we're all aiming for the same goal and there's plenty of space for all of us. But I agree that, you know, they are, Google, you, you can't ignore their importance in this field. Yeah. And uh, actually when I saw Google now come out, I was actually thrilled to see that Google uh, has come out and added validation to this. Yeah. I think that was a very important step, uh, uh, step forward and more and more people are now paying attention. Even in consumer advertising, I'm seeing advertisements during football games now where Google Now is mentioned, which I think is a really good thing to, uh, to get the word out uh, about, uh, uh, about this. Now, how do we differentiate? Well, one, our approach isn't to go directly to consumer. We are creating a platform so companies can build their own personal assistance out yeah. there. Um, you know, we have APIs available so that if a company is interested, and in, pick any field you want, um, they're interested in providing a proactive personal assistance in their field. Well they can accelerate their time to market by using our platform. What we have on our phones and our tablets are uh, illustration of how it works. So, you know, in the morning, I, you know, I wake Good up, morning. I get a you know, morning you summary. You have one event um, on your calendar but today. perhaps one company says, you know Interview what, with Robert I don't Scoble really care so much about having the weather, or I don't care so much. Uh, or uh, we have companies tell us, we're concerned about the privacy of email. We don't want to do that just quite yet. So then they can select which parts of the technology that they want to put in and create the personal assistant that they want in their vision. Uh, we're happy to share our vision. Uh, we have you know, a five to 10 year vision of how we think this thing is going to play out and what are the technologies that are necessary because um, there's some real heavyweight technology, you know, some serious uh, science that has to go into this to make this thing work. Being able to figure out what is the most important thing for you right now, Robert, and to determine should I even interrupt you um, there's a lot of thinking, quote unquote thinking, that goes on into making those decisions. Yeah. So that's some of the key parts of the, uh, of the differentiation. Now I can go into some of the other particular assistants, like the email summarization that we have, we don't see that anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, we don't see in any of the other uh, personal assistants uh, technology that tries to determine what it is that you are doing right now. Why is that important? Well, if I, I can't figure out whether to interrupt you unless I know what you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, you know, are you going? Are you exercising right now? Are you at the gym? Are you sleeping? You know, are you you know having dinner? How with do you figure that? How do you figure out the different contexts of your life? 
uh, are you looking at the sensors that I, uh, on me, or, or are you looking at just yeah. what am I putting on the calendar? So great question. The calendar f uh, starts as anchor points for, for this. If you put something on the calendar, we'll accept that as a very likely thing that you are going to do. We know yeah. some people put stuff in their calendar that they, are, that they aren't. However, we're looking at what's in between the calendar. And, you know, what, are the, what are in those gaps? And from there, we use the sensor information, and we use historical information as well. Got it. So, you know, if we see you have a pattern, and you know, we also use a model of what do people typically do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And what we're trying to do is figure out, okay, hmm, we know you sh a person shops at a certain frequency. Yep. They, a person will go to sleep at a certain frequency. They'll eat, you know, they'll eat three meals a day, et cetera. So if you don't have something on your calendar, we'll start, fig you know, we'll start making some guesses based on, all right, around this time of day, people are eating lunch, and where are you right now? Uh, if you're at a restaurant, well, that's pretty hard, strong evidence that indicates that. Yeah. Um, however, what if it's like 2 o'clock, you know, you're in 2 or 3 o'clock, middle of the afternoon, and you're in a shopping complex? Hmm, what could you be doing right now? Uh, have you shopped earlier this week, et cetera? So all of this goes into, and it eventually gets yeah. translates into probabilities. And th you know, from there, we were able to not always determine exactly what we're doing, but the two or three most likely things you were doing. Yeah. And from there, we provide the assistance. Got okay, it. we see, you know, you're probably eating or shopping, okay, that's fine. All right, you may be exercising or, you know, or, you know, you could just be over at the park because, you know, you're watching somebody play a game. You know, at least when you limit the space, the amount of assistance is uh, changing. It's asking you to It's asking, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's telling me things, so it's telling me, uh, so. Uh, and so. the interview. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is, you got another yeah. meeting to go to. It's a, and that's a good, good way to end it. Mm -hmm. um, it's on Android right now? Uh, the version we have is on Android right now. It's okay. not direct to consumer uh, at this point. So okay. we, you know, we give it to our partners as, uh, as part of, uh, to showcase the technology, uh, uh, to, let them, uh, to let them give a spin of it. So we haven't done a direct to consumer. So it's not, in, uh, the, it's not on Google Play, so you can't download it yet. Okay. But, uh, but we do have a waiting list so people can come approach us so that uh, when we do uh, make it available for consumers, they can come, uh, come talk to us. So and, it's, you know. it's in early testing phase or, or you have some partners who are using an API and building their own Yeah, thing. It's, it's, so it's well beyond testing, well beyond beta. It's, you know, it's, it's very real, but we haven't, you know, we haven't put it out there uh, for consumers to download. Okay. It's very real because our partners are the ones who build, uh, you know, the platform is real, they're using it. And it's very real because they've actually launched applications. Is there any uh, partner you can name that we can go and get it from? Or? Not yet. Okay. So, there we go. <laughs> um, and you're on Android only at this point. Uh, why? Because it's easier to study the context of, of people because you can talk to the radios, you can talk to the dialer, you can talk to the contact list, and stuff that you can't do on an Apple device? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question, because when we started this, you know, uh, there was some good technological reasons to go on Android for some of the reasons you mentioned. We get some better access. However, Apple has improved theirs, and Android has improved theirs over time, so they're going to they keep going back and forth on that one. Uh, but the core reason why we only put it on Android is because our partners are the ones who decide which platforms they want to go on. So we have partners who've done iPhone versions of, uh, of things and Android versions, et cetera. Okay. So uh, we just do it so that we can spend a lot of our energy building the core technology that supports this and not worry about you know, splitting our efforts onto building onto multiple platforms. Very cool. So you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, natural language processing, machine learning, you know, even AI in there. So we, we spend a lot of our energy into that and making the platform fantastic uh, so that our partners can build uh, great personal assistance off of it. Very cool. Where do we find it? Again, where are you guys? Uh, the, the, website, yep. uh, the website is recall, R-E-Q-A-L-L. -L it's spelled com. a little unusually, yeah. R-E-Q-A-L-L. -L. Mm -hmm. okay. Recall with a Q. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming and talking about what you guys are doing. Appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me.